is more of in the front end. So when we design a device, we want to be mindful how it could be used in human subjects. Um, so I think about how clinicians will take the device and I try to make it easier for them to use, easier for them to understand, and try to make it foolproof in their use so that we can treat uh, uh, chronic diseases, mostly uh, neurological disorders. So when I came, I brought in semiconductor technology that lets you pattern many of small sites per lead and you form into three-dimensional device. Because the brain is three-dimensional, so you can make contact with many neurons in a certain area. You can communicate with the cells and you can stimulate them to recover functions. When people are paralyzed due to damage to their uh, spinal cord, then everything below, they will lose control. So for example, bladder control. So we'll implant these three-dimensional arrays into spinal cord, and then you can gain access to the bladder circuitry. So you'll gain nutrition and incontinence control. Another ap application is called profound hearing loss. So for people with the auditory nerve damage, cochlear implant, which is widely used uh, in, around the world, may not be effective. So what we do is we access the region called cochlear nucleus. So we bypass the damaged nerve area and then we stimulate neurons in the nuclei. So that's called the brainstem implants. It's been great here at HMRI. Uh, I get to work with uh, many brilliant colleagues, uh, some of them who has been in the field for many years and who are widely respected in the field of uh, neuroscience and neuroengineering. And some younger people have lots of energy to go at it every day. Um, I feel very blessed to have an opportunity like this at HMRI.